I have the side plane of the nose and the cheek, and there's an in-between. So there are three facets, side plane of the nose, in-between facet, and cheek meeting. I have separated those. You're in for a treat today because self-portraits are all the rage because of the artist and selfie competition and because it's something we all need to do as artists to preserve ourselves in paint. We have invited the incredible Gabriela Gonzalez Deloso to be our guest today. Gabby, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for that amazing introduction, Eric. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to being here today. On this show, I have enjoyed all throughout this time, this bleak time. Uh, 2020 has been a crazy year, but you've been a highlight of it. So thank you uh, so much. And now I'm on it. So, wow. Yeah, well, uh, we're, we're honored that you would be on it. I want to show people some of your work. We just grabbed some things at random that we have and uh, just to show a little bit of People have an understanding. Look at the lace work on that. Man, that must have taken months. Yeah, I, I take my time. That's for sure. Layers well, that's, and layers. That's terrific. I love the uh, the color of the light on the right side or left side of this person's face. Uh, wow, that's fabulous. There's a story behind that, I'm sure. Yes, there is, definitely. And look at that. Anyway, uh Gabriella is our guest today, and Gabriella, what are you going to do? Okay, so today I'm just going to uh, focus on developing a self-portrait, and the, the specific phase I'm going to develop is applying skin tone after the lay-in. So people, after they've blocked everything in, they've drawn it in, and they go to the skin tones, they sort of get stuck. So that's kind of what I'm going to focus on. Today. Oh, that's cool. Because I that's where I always get stuck. Yeah. So I'll describe my thought process and why I choose the colors I do. I actually uh, sent you guys over a, a few mixtures that I set up for this. So that should be in the comment section. My palette's in there too. I love color. And uh, so today is about using color along with value to block in uh, the self-portrait. Okay, so today we're focusing in on what to do next after you have your lay-in, the skin tones. And uh, just to tell you, um, I uh, use certain mixtures and I mix into them. I have actually made piles beforehand to save time the the piles I've mixed should be in the comment section. So I want to just uh, point out sections of the head in terms of color, okay? Forehead is a little bit yellower than the rest of the face. Um, cheek, bone, nose section is a little bit redder. The belly of the egg of the head comes forward at the center. So it makes sense that the red is at the center. Warm colors come forward. The third uh, portion of the egg would be the jaw and the chin, which would be cooler. So that's going to have the blues, the um, greens in there, and that recedes. So that makes sense as the egg goes back in space. One of the questions I have for you yeah. is uh, one thing I always suffer with is I, I remember when uh, Nelson Shanks told me about that, you know, the idea of the three bands of color and, uh, and, and oftentimes greens in the, in the chin area. The thing that I always have trouble with is how do I, sometimes it makes sense on male portraits because the, you're, you know, there's a five o'clock shadow of the beard, but, I find it very difficult to make it look right on a female portrait without, because um, otherwise all my females look like they have beards. Can you help me with that? Yes. So basically what I'm going to show you today, and I'm going to get started because, you know, it's, it's a whole process here, is you first are going to see the colors tiled out, separated. And then what happens is you come and weave them together. The process I'm using sharp brushes here. Yeah, let me see. See sharp brushes? Now, 
Sharp meaning pointed? Pointy, pointy brushes. And I'm going to weave like weaving a basket with these sharp brushes. Okay, and people want to know what kind of brushes you're using. Okay, I'm sorry these, to interrupt. These are a size two. Okay, it's a round and they're made by Utrecht actually. Very okay. pointy. And uh, I go back and forth between different types of brushes. But okay. if we're weaving in this particular demo, this is very useful. And to answer your question specifically, the, the idea is to overstate so everything looks separated. But then the next step that you're talking about is to bring the, the values together without losing them. That's the tough part. So let's get to work and let's see if I can clarify. All right. Yeah, Terrific. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is the shadow, right? I've set up classical lighting, and it's very easy to demonstrate the division in this type of lighting. I have one-sided lighting, a little triangle of light on the shadow side. We have a clear-cut division. So the first thing I'm going to start with is this little deep pocket in the eye socket. I'm going for a burnt sienna burnt umber mixture i will throw in some white into that white neutralizes and it um it grays down things people think it's it's great for lightening lightening or or making things much brighter but actually the opposite is true it grays down things okay so i have this deep little pocket here now i'm going to go to the other side because you want to be symmetrical and I'm just going to get this little moment here. I'm going into the eyeball. So now we have both corners deep. They're some of the deepest recessions in the uh, skull. Okay, so now I'm going to now think about the band of division between light and shadow. So some people call that the terminator, the half tone. So I'm going to visualize a marble rolling down between light and shadow, and I'm just going to follow a darker tone down. Okay, this darker tone is darker. So I am connecting everything. I'll go into the lip. I see the shadow goes through here. The middle goes around the bottom lip this way. Down here, it connects, goes down in here, I'm thinking angles and I'm thinking volumes, which is a whole other thing. But I do think volume, which means top plane, side plane, under plane, as I do this. Okay, so now I'm going to the forehead because this is from chin to the top. So here we are going, I'm going to actually soften up the tone, make it a little bit lighter, and I'm going to throw a little bit of cool uh, mixture into this, which would be my, I have um, the colors again in the comments. For the forehead, uh, there's a little bit more yellow. Uh, so I'm just throwing a little bit of that into my burnt sienna burnt umber mixture. This is still shadow tone, but incorporating other colors. Okay, so Here's the division happening. Okay, so I have that. And I'm just going to take a very dry, flat brush so that we don't have this too sharp for now. And I'm just feathering it in a little bit. Okay, so we don't have this very, very sharp, even down here a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do next thing is to drop in a generalized shadow tone, which would be burnt. Sienna burnt umber a little bit lighter than this darker bar. So I'm going to go around the structure of the cheek, which is a rounded structure here. There's white with the burnt sienna, graze it down a little bit. I'm going around it. I'm going to throw a little bit of extra burnt sienna without the burnt umber so it's not as dark and it's a little bit more red yet gray down by the white okay. is your underpainting already dry i assume yes it's dry 
Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we have this happening and I'm visualizing the other side. So I always have the other side in mind. Okay, so now we have the cheekbone here in the shadow. I'm gonna mix uh, a little bit more of a luminous and this is splitting values because you wanna keep the shadow tone flat. You don't wanna get little islands and crazy subdivisions too early. So this is about, you know, as you paint more and more, you get an idea of um, how subtle things have to be, how subtle the eye picks up on things. Okay, so. This jaw goes behind the cheekbone, which is coming forward. So I'm very subtly dividing that. Flat, flat is the idea. You don't want, you don't want too much going on right now. Okay, so I'm weaving with this pointy brush. I'm weaving things together. I'm gonna to take a little bit of a tone here that's going to be slightly lighter than the corner. Pull it across. Okay, so try not to be too sharp in the shadow. Shadows are soft, cloudy. Um, they are not very sharp like the light. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a cool ribbon going along light and shadow or right next to the Terminator. So I'm going to take my mixture that I pre-mixed, which is pale pink cobalt turquoise light and um, a little bit of burnt umber into that. And I'm going to place this. Now, this is a, a, a little bit um overstated with the intention to come back in so what i'm going to do towards after i've laid everything and is weave everything together so i need the separation first in order to weave it together now i don't want to keep it too separated so what i'll do is i'll come in and with the a clean brush just kind of pat in the turn here so it's a back and forth process of, you know, weaving things together and separating them out. Okay, along the nose here, I see a cool tone. So it's very subtle the way I mixed it. I'm not going directly onto my canvas with um, a green or it's, it's a tone that's mixed down. So it's a cool tone. And very carefully, I'm tapping this in. And I'm going to go back. Um, and I'm just going to take a little bit of this edge, just so that it's not all even. This comes into this a little bit. This shadow tone comes into the front plane of the nose. So it's thoughtful uh, application. The cool tone again. So it's back and forth. These sharp brushes are very good for weaving. And I'm taking little horizontal strokes here to get rid of the white of the canvas too. Okay, so I've done that. So now I continue my cool down. And there's some cool here too. And I'm constantly weaving together. I kind of try to make, I don't want to isolate this from this. So I'm traveling, traveling. Okay, now towards below the mouth. I'm exaggerating. I'm putting a little extra viridian. I see more green there. 
and I know that's a lot of green, but I sometimes you have to separate a color and then tone it back down. Okay, I'm going to leave that way overstated. It's going to help me later. Okay, so now there are a couple of other moments here. There is a tone here. I don't want to overstate it. So I want to go in with the cool. Because this is not a place you want to overstate too much. It's not aesthetically pleasing in a portrait. So I'm careful with that. It's it, You would say it's a crease, but let's try to create the separation, not with the crease, but with a more aesthetically pleasing tone. So I'm going in with the cool here. Okay. And then over here also, cool. And there's a little extra kind of rich, cool here too. So I kind of equate this and this. So I'm mapping this all out here. Okay, and then another great area for cool tones is going to be underneath the hairline. So I'm just going to go in here with a little bit of a cool tone again with the intention to bring it back down later. Here is the side plane. Cools will turn a plane downward because cools recede and a warms come forward. So let's just fill this in. And you know, the thing about laying down color is you can lay a cool and then a warm on top and it's got more dimension to it. So my, I have that plan. It's, you know, to calibrate. It's not just leaving it there, it's a plan to calibrate it. Okay, so let's kind of not uh, stop the flow. So let's kind of focus, go around here. I see a little extra viridian in front of the ear. This is a great place for a nice, rich tone that's cool. I love the cool in front of the, the, the kind of little hairline here in front of the ear. It's always a little extra. Okay. And then I'm going to drag this down here and very carefully just lay a little a little tone here and then the chin I'm going to add a little bit of a darker a darker cool just below here so it reads stronger than this part. Okay, so that's my cools. Okay, so now let's kind of work. I'm actually gonna just drag this down a little bit into here. Okay, before I get into the forehead, what I'm going to do is actually lay in a little bit of a darker skin tone for this little light triangle here. So very soft skin tone. I'm gonna drag it up a little bit. And without doing any detail today, I'm trying to give you areas of volume and form. And later, the detail builds over this. So what I'm gonna do is soften this a little bit here. Take my little 
shadow in the corner across here. And I'm going to now go into the forehead. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take my yellowy mixture here, and I'm going to apply it to the forehead. So it's a pale pink yellow ochre, uh, titanium white, into the forehead. So there's tone on the forehead. It's not as light as this area. So. I'm applying that there. And then as we go to this half, this half is going to go in front of this half. So it's going to be a little bit yellower, a little bit brighter here. So I'm getting the tone down. I'm going to drag a little bit of the shadow tone just off of the where the hairline goes under the hair just to sort of mark this half. So we kind of have that half coming forward there. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for now, and I'm just going to move into the cheek. The light is last, so I leave the lights for last. So I want to develop the generalized tone areas, and the lights are what I'm going to use to weave everything in. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with a little bit of a redder mixture here. And I am going around the cheek bone. I'm going into the pool. Here. So I'm sort of calibrating the, the hairline as I lay this in. And I'm not going to just stop there. So that's one little thing. You know, I'm thinking um, it's not going to only be purely cool down in the jaw. It's going to have some, uh, some of the warmth of the cheek. So that kind of kills some of the cool. Okay, so that's a little overstated, but it's going to go back and forth. Okay, so I have that happening uh, on the cheek. I'm going to kind of block in the warmth of the nose because it's part of this protruding bar we have. And the ball of the nose is redder than the top. Um, so I have that in mind. And I'm just blocking that in. A little exaggerated. And then as I go up I'm blocking in the tone here as well. So I'm getting the front plane of the nose here. With a little cool already that I established before. Okay, now side plane here. I'm going to go in with a kind of a little bit more orangey tone because the light is coming here and it's hitting this. I'm going to try that. And I'm going into that pool there. And I can always come back and calibrate that. So it's just about separation right now. Okay. So what I want to say too right now, I have the side plane of the nose and the cheek. And there's an in-between, so there are three facets, side plane of the nose, in-between facet, and cheek meeting. I have separated those purposely, and I will see, pull the seam together um, when I start to apply my lights. Okay, 
And while I have the reds on my brush, I'm just going to quickly put a little color on the lips here. <clears throat> lips always seem to be a problem for some people because the tendency is to, it's kind of like thinking a tree looks like a lollipop. It's like thinking lips are red. Yeah, it's it's kind of like all about the volume and not thinking of them as horizontal. You have to think about the volume coming from here, turning in and, you know, making sure that you're not thinking of them as a flat color. They're not really a flat color. They're a volume on the face. Um, bottom lip catches more light than the top lip. And so you have to be really careful that it doesn't look pasted on. Um, so there are little tricks to be had to in painting the lips. The little corner of the lip is not just a flat corner. There's a little bit of cool coming off of the corner. So, you, uh, you go into a lot of depth of this in, in your video. I forgot to mention that you have one. Yeah. I think I did. Um, I'll show it real quickly. It's called Poetic Portraits. And I put a link in the comments section if people are interested in that. Yeah, I mean, it, this is just a very, very small phase of, you know, what I do in the video because I'm isolating a stage. So, you know, this is just about the color application. Yeah, you're also able to see the reference because you're painting from a live model. Yeah, exactly. So, um this is just very abbreviated idea of what I do there. Okay, so now, uh, so I've got this going on here. Let's just hit the center line of the lips a little bit. That's the, the darkest little moment. Uh, the outline should definitely not be as dark as the part of the lips. The part of the lips is much darker. You try to make it sharp, or is it is it, it soft? It, you know what? It's parts of it are sharp and parts of it are soft. They're little accents, um, being punctuating the forms of the lips. So that's again, that's something that is in the drawing phase, and so don't make a sharp line going across, but make this darker than the outer edges, uh, in general. Generalized rule. All okay. right. So let me just get a little bit of red on the ear so it's not just sitting there. So it's included uh, in this red zone. You don't want to sharpen it too much so it comes forward. You don't want to get lost in that. Okay, so now I'm going to get to the bottom area, which is the jaw. And I have a cooler mixture for that. So here's what I do in terms of thinking about the jaw. So here goes a mixture that I prepared. And see, what I'm doing right now is overstating. So let's kind of do this first, overstate. And I'm kind of coming into the red. I pulled the red down before. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the cool that I mixed before with the cobalt turquoise light into the pale pink and burnt umber. A little bit of red, the chin comes forward. It's a little bit richer. So Okay, so that is a little richer than this. And so now what I would like to do is start to apply the lights and, and I separate my colors on different brushes. So I'm not using the same brush for, to do this. So, yeah, so that's something that's important to me. So now I'm going to come in with the light And I am separating the bars here. This is the part that people that lost them. So, okay, so right now I have filled that in. I'm gonna go back in there with my, my red cheekbone 
tone. I'm going to pull it into the light. And it's going to be working the piece of the puzzle. So now I can look at different little aspects of this shadow tone, pull it down, connect. The que there's questions in the, in the comments. And, uh, Will, Gabriella, what are you going to do in Realism Live? That's a secret we can't tell you. <laughs> Gabrielle and I were plotting it today, so we'll let yeah. you know on that, but she's going to be part of Realism Live. Uh, people watching from India, somebody said that you were their inspiration when they first started to learn back in 2012. Oh, that's uh, Hi, India. Hello. Uh, everybody, people say, um, amazing how it's coming to life. Somebody said, after this is done, I'm going to rewatch your video. Good idea. I think rewatching videos is a great idea. It's like rereading books. You see different things once you've gotten to new, new levels. Yeah, you learn something new every time uh, because there's so much you can absorb in one watch. There's so many skills involved in painting a portrait, and I try to cover different aspects of it in the video, um, you know, and it's a lot to absorb. It's a lot to absorb. Okay, so now coming back to this, I'm going to go to the forehead and and I'm applying the turn here. I'm weaving. Think of the idea of weaving bars of tone. So bars of tone. Bars of tone. So there's this is cool. I laid down the green. So now I'm weaving, but keeping the bar. I'm not going to lose the bar there. See how that's greener than this bar? Okay, yeah. so it's that's kind of the, the make it or break it kind of um, calibration you need. You need to have control. The control is going to come from the practice. You got about eight minutes left. Oh, my goodness. The I know. No pressure. <laughs> well, quite frankly, I mean, doing what you've done already would have taken me about six hours. Okay, so I'll do my best to get it all, you know, but you get the idea of what I'm saying. Yeah, of course. You know, so here, this here, we don't want this to be totally flat. You want to separate it from from this and you want to create that cheekbone tone. So let's go in with a, a lighter statement here and let's create, let's create um, a meeting place of tone. So the red of the cheek is very useful here. And see what I'm doing without creating a line? That's very important. And that's a very, very common, common error I see. And you see how the, the jaw area is has a lot of colors. It's not just the cool. I am pulling down very carefully, though. I'm not just putting a lot on it. I'm weaving. You're the quite red. a quite quite a good weaver. Yeah, well, a practice makes perfect. <laughs> <laughs> a practice makes perfect. I've been weaving and weaving and weaving and weaving miles and miles of this stuff um, until you know the the production uh, starts to leave a trail. Hey, you guys in the comments, if you're if you're going to Realism Live, just say so in the comments. We'd love to know if you're going. Hello, India. A couple people from India. Welcome. We're all one big family of artists, you know. Okay, so I'm leaving. I am thinking about the light connecting, connecting, and flowing evenly across this. We don't have a way to show a close-up of her weaving, Tamara, but uh, we will ask her before we wrap up to hold it up to the camera. And she's uh, she's got about, I don't know, four or five minutes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so a little light on the top lip, you know. I'm going to, and you know, using landmarks is also a way to develop the little striations, uh, the little bars of color, because you can refer off of them. You have the highlight of the nose, which I refer to. Um, it's, you know, this highlight is where the turn is. Here. And very carefully describe the plane with the highlight. It helps you build. So you can deconstruct the highlight after, you know, you've laid it in. Okay. Um, is there a garbage truck outside your door? You know what? There's a bus stop. A bus. <laughs> yeah, the buses go by your gate. Where do you where do you live? I live Gabriel. in West New York and I block them out of my mind. It's taken me some time, but uh yeah, so I kind of hear the buses. But I'll right. tell you Corona has um brought a nice quietness so to to the bus stop, but they're picking up again. So I guess. That's yeah, well, I guess they're going to go to school. Yeah. All right. This okay, is cool. So, well, so keep you, going. You, you can okay. keep going. Okay. Three or four, four more minutes. Three or four. Wow. Okay. My goodness. I have a lot of time. Okay. So here, there's a little bit of cool. Somebody said they're going to sign up for Realism Live and maybe watch from their desk at work. Just know that you have replays, Angie, and you can you can watch on the week weekends and so on as well. So you know, I know a lot of people have been sneaking views at work, and that's okay. I'm softening. So in between light and uh, shadow, you want you don't want this to be cut out. There's a softness to it. So. I'm taking kind of a dry brush and I'm weaving my shadow tone into, into this division. So it's like I said, it's, it's a thoughtful weaving process that, so remember this cool here? Now yeah. Cool. See? Now, do I, you kind of follow any of the principles of Munsell color in terms of turning you know, turning with color? Do you know what? I, I've studied everything and I've developed my own sensibility. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, I kind of know what works and what doesn't work through a lot of trial um, and practices. Um, you know, I know when something's too strong. I know when something I, is too understated. Um you know, so I am sure I do follow because it's creating illusion. In order to create illusion successfully, I'm sure the principles are all similar. You know, it's just how do you get there? Everyone has their own uh, way. And so the idea is going to be to find your way that works for you. And so that's what I've done. So, Gabrielle, I'm going to drop you off camera for a second so you can get yourself back on camera so we can say goodbye. I'm going to play something in the meantime, okay. and uh, then we'll be back with you before we wrap up, okay? Okay, okay. Your, de your demo today was fabulous. A lot of thumbs up, a lot of applause. Everybody, thumbs up and applause for Gabriella gonzalez Deloso. Gabriella will be on Realism Live, and today is the last day to sign up if you want to save 200 bucks. Think how many art supplies you could buy for that 200 bucks. And we have a lot of sponsors, and they're going to be trying to give you a lot of opportunities to buy some great things at some great discounts. So why not save it? Um, it has a money-back guarantee if you watch the first day and you don't love it. If you don't feel like the first day is worth the entire price of the event, I'll give you your money back. You'll just let me know. I'll give you your money back. We will cut the cord. You won't be able to watch the rest of it. But that first day, you'll get for free, right? So it's really worthwhile. So anyway. Gabriella, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I want to tell everybody, Gabriella has a fabulous video out. It's called Poetic Portraits. And uh, I think we put the, the information in the chat. But if you just go to Lily, uh, oops, if you go to um, lilypubs.com and search her name, it's 
Gabriella Deloso, and you'll be able to find it there. Uh, thank you, Gabriella. I really appreciate you doing this for us today. I'm honored that you would give us your time. Thank you so much. I uh, was very happy to do this. Um, thank you for everything you do. It was the least uh, I could do and contribute to your positive energy movement. Boy, we sure need it. <laughs> I know we do. 